Mrs. Davis had always believed that certain people didn't belong in her world, but when her path crossed with a man she cruelly insulted only to discover he was her new boss, her life was turned upside down. It was one of those sunny days that made everything seem brighter, happier, and more alive. The park was full of families enjoying the weekend, children laughing and running around, and parents chatting on the benches. The air smelled of fresh grass and flowers, and the sounds of birds chirping mixed with the joyful squeals of kids playing on the swings. Mr. Johnson, a tall, kind black man with a warm smile, was at the park with his little daughter Emma. Emma, a cheerful six-year-old with pigtails bouncing as she ran, loved the park more than anything. She was laughing and chasing after butterflies, her eyes shining with joy. Come here, Daddy, Emma called out, holding up a daisy she had just picked from the edge of the field. I found this for you. Mr. Johnson smiled as he walked over to his daughter. That's beautiful, sweetheart, he said, taking the small flower and tucking it behind his ear to make her giggle. You've got good taste in flowers. Emma laughed and clapped her hands, her little feet tapping the ground in excitement. The two of them then ran off to the jungle gym together, ready to play. But, not too far away, a woman sat on a park bench watching them, her face twisted with a scowl. Mrs. Davis had been coming to this park for years. She liked it because she thought of it as her park, a place where she could sit quietly, away from the world, and feel like she was in control of something, even if it was just the empty seat she occupied every Saturday. Today, however, the peace was interrupted by the sight of Mr. Johnson and Emma. To Mrs. Davis, they didn't belong, not in her park, a mind filled with bitter thoughts. She crossed her arms and huffed, watching them with narrowed eyes, her lips pressed into a tight, angry line. Why does he have to bring his kind here? She muttered to herself. Her voice, though low, was full of disgust. Mrs. Davis had lived with these ugly thoughts for as long as she could remember. She was always finding reasons to look down on others, and when she saw people who didn't look or live like her, she got that familiar feeling of superiority. She looked at Mr. Johnson with cold, judgmental eyes. His wide smile and playful nature with his daughter only made her angrier. How could he be so happy? Didn't he know he didn't fit in here? She felt a tightening in her chest as her fingers gripped the edge of the bench. Meanwhile, Mr. Johnson and Emma continued to have the time of their lives. Emma begged her father to push her on the swings, and Mr. Johnson, with a laugh, lifted her up and gave her a big push. Emma sewed through the air, giggling with delight as her legs kicked back and forth. Higher, Daddy, higher, she squealed. Mr. Johnson pushed her gently, watching her little face light up. You're going to fly away if I push you any higher, he teased, laughing along with her. But Mrs. Davis couldn't stand it anymore. Her patience was wearing thin. She felt a burning sensation in her stomach, a mix of anger and disgust, that bubbled up inside her. Her thoughts were racing, each one more hateful than the last. How dare he come here, looking so happy? How dare they act like they belong? She glared at Mr. Johnson and Emma, her heart beating faster as she imagined marching over there and telling them exactly how she felt. She glanced around, wondering if anyone else felt the same way as she did. Were they all just going to ignore what was happening? Didn't anyone else care that this park was being invaded? Her foot tapped anxiously on the ground. She couldn't let this go on. She had to do something. She had to say something. The thoughts in her head swirled and buzzed, almost like an angry beehive. Every second she watched them play felt like it was pushing her closer and closer to an outburst. Mr. Johnson, of course, hadn't noticed Mrs. Davis watching them. He was too focused on making sure Emma had a wonderful day. To him, nothing else mattered at that moment but his daughter's happiness. He loved her more than anything in the world, and days like this, when they could just laugh and play, were the moments he cherished. But Mrs. Davis wasn't going to stay quiet any longer. Her hands clenched into fists, their jaw tightening as she took a deep breath. She stood up from her bench, her face twisted in a mix of anger and disgust. Every muscle in her body was tense as she started walking toward Mr. Johnson and Emma, each step heavy with the weight of her hateful thoughts.
Mrs. Davis marched across the park with sharp, quick steps, her heart pounding with every move she made. She had no idea what she was going to say, but the anger bubbling inside her felt uncontrollable. Her mind was racing, filled with all the ugly thoughts she had about Mr. Johnson and his daughter. She didn't like them here, and she was ready to let them know exactly how she felt. As Mrs. Davis approached, Mr. Johnson was still pushing Emma on the swing. His face lit up with joy as he watched his daughter laugh. Emma's giggles filled the air, but they were suddenly interrupted by the sound of Mrs. Davis's voice. You people don't belong here. Mrs. Davis spat, her voice sharp and cutting. This park isn't for you. Mr. Johnson's smile faded for a moment, but he didn't turn around. He knew better than to react right away. His first instinct was to protect Emma from any kind of negativity. He kept pushing her gently on the swing, hoping Mrs. Davis would just go away if he didn't give her the attention she was looking for. But Mrs. Davis wasn't backing down. Her face twisted into a skull, and she stepped even closer, her voice getting louder. You think you can just come here and act like this place is yours? She snapped, crossing her arms tightly over her chest. You don't belong here. This is my park, not yours. People like you have no right to be here. Mr. Johnson's grip on the swing tightened, and his jaw clenched. He took a deep breath, reminding himself that he had to stay calm. For Emma, she was too young to understand what was happening, and he didn't want her to see him get upset. Daddy, Emma asked softly, her small voice cutting through the tension. She was swinging lower now, her laughter replaced by confusion. Why is that lady yelling at us? Mr. Johnson's heart broke a little at the sound of his daughter's innocent question. He didn't want her to experience this kind of hatred, especially not at such a young age. He forced a smile and knelt down to her level, gently stopping the swing. Don't worry about it, sweetie, he said softly, stroking her hair. We're just here to have fun, okay? But Mrs. Davis wasn't finished. Her voice grew even more aggressive, her words dripping with malice. Fun? You think you can have fun here, she sneered. People like you don't belong anywhere near here. You should go back to where you came from. Mr. Johnson stood up slowly, turning to face Mrs. Davis for the first time. His eyes, usually warm and kind, were now filled with sadness and frustration. He didn't want to engage with her, but he couldn't let her continue to speak like this in front of Emma. Ma'am, I don't know what your problem is, but we're just here to enjoy the park like everyone else, he said, his voice calm but firm. There's no need for this. Mrs. Davis scoffed, glaring at him with cold eyes. Oh, there's plenty of need for it, she said, stepping closer and pointing a finger at him. People like you are ruining this neighborhood. You think you can just come here, act like you own the place, and we're supposed to accept it. Mr. Johnson felt a wave of anger rising inside him, but he swallowed it down. He glanced at Emma, who was watching the whole thing with wide, confused eyes. He couldn't let her see him lose control. Not here. Not like this. Daddy, why is she being so mean? Emma asked again, her voice trembling slightly. Mr. Johnson's heart sank. How could he explain this to her? How could he tell her that some people would hate her just because of the color of her skin? He didn't want her to grow up with that kind of pain. I'm not being mean, Mrs. Davis interrupted, her voice harsh. I'm just telling the truth. This isn't your place. You don't belong here. Mr. Johnson took another deep breath, trying to stay composed. He could feel his anger bubbling just beneath the surface, but he refused to let it out. Not in front of Emma. Not in front of anyone. Ma'am, I'm not going to argue with you, he said quietly, his voice steady despite the tension in the air. We have every right to be here, just like anyone else. But Mrs. Davis wasn't backing down. Her face twisted with even more rage as she stepped forward, her voice rising in anger. People like you have ruined this country.
She yelled, her words sharp and cruel. You think you can just walk around like you're entitled to everything, but you're not. You should leave before someone makes you. Mr. Johnson felt his blood boil, his fists clenched at his sides, and his heart pounded in his chest. He wanted to shout back, to defend himself, to tell her she had no right to speak to him or his daughter that way. But he knew it wouldn't help. It would only make things worse. Instead, he knelt down again and looked into Emma's eyes, his voice soft and calm. Why don't we go get some ice cream, sweetie? he asked, forcing a smile. I think it's time for a treat. Emma nodded, still unsure of what was happening but trusting her dad. She slipped her small hand into his, and they began to walk away, leaving Mrs. Davis fuming behind them. But as they walked, the tension hung in the air like a dark cloud, and Mr. Johnson couldn't shake the feeling that this wasn't over. Mrs. Davis's hateful words echoed in his mind, and he could feel the weight of the situation pressing down on him. Would she let it go, or would she follow them, pushing until something finally snapped? The day at the park, which had started so perfectly, now felt heavy and full of uncertainty. Mr. Johnson held Emma's hand tightly, trying to focus on her smile and the promise of ice cream. But inside, his heart was heavy, and he couldn't help but wonder how much longer could he hold his patience, and how much further would Mrs. Davis go. Mrs. Davis continued her rant, pacing back and forth as she hurled insult after insult at Mr. Johnson and Emma. Her face was red, her words sharp and cutting. She didn't care who was watching or how her hateful words might affect the little girl. She was lost in her own world of anger, convinced that she had every right to say what she was saying. Mr. Johnson held onto Emma's hand, his knuckles white from the pressure. He kept his focus on her, trying to block out Mrs. Davis's words, though they stung deeply. Emma, still confused, clung to her father's side, sensing something was wrong, but not fully understanding the cruel words being thrown at them. Then suddenly, the sharp ringing of a phone pierced through the heated moment. Mrs. Davis froze mid-rant, her hand reaching instinctively into her pocket. She glanced at the screen, her expression quickly changing from fury to panic. Oh no, she muttered, eyes wide. I'm late. Without another word, Mrs. Davis turned on her heel and stormed off, still muttering to herself. She walked briskly toward the park exit, her angry words trailing behind her. Mr. Johnson watched her go, a mix of relief and disbelief washing over him. For a moment, there was silence, broken only by the soft rustle of leaves in the breeze. Mr. Johnson knelt down beside Emma, his voice gentle. Are you okay, sweetheart? He asked, wiping a tear from her cheek. Emma nodded slowly, though she still looked troubled. Why was the lady so mad at us, Daddy? He sighed deeply, struggling to find the right words. Sometimes people say mean things because they don't understand, he said softly. But remember, it's not about us. We're going to keep being kind, no matter what. Emma nodded again, but her smile had faded. Mr. Johnson's heart ached, knowing that moments like this would leave a mark on his daughter. He wanted to protect her from the harshness of the world, but he also knew that he couldn't shield her from everything. He gave her a reassuring hug and decided they would go home early that day, hoping ice cream would cheer her up. The next morning, Mrs. Davis was rushing through the doors of her office, her mind racing. She had been late for an important meeting the day before and was now nervously preparing for her first day with their new boss. She wasn't sure what to expect, but the rumors around the office said he was strict and professional. Mrs. Davis had spent all night stressing over making a good impression. After all, her job was on the line and she couldn't afford any more mistakes. She straightened her blouse and smoothed her hair trying to compose herself as she approached the conference room. Her heart pounded in her chest as she reached for the door handle. She was determined to be polite, professional, and as respectful as possible to her new supervisor.
Taking a deep breath, she opened the door and stepped inside. The air in the room was thick with anticipation, and her eyes scanned the large office. As she walked in, the back of the chair at the head of the table was facing away from her. The chair slowly swiveled around, revealing the person she'd been dreading to see the most. Mrs. Davis' breath caught in her throat. Her eyes widened in shock, and her face went pale. Sitting in front of her, wearing a sharp suit, was none other than Mr. Johnson, the same man she had insulted and humiliated at the park the day before. He sat there, calm and collected, his face serious but unreadable. Mrs. Davis felt her stomach twist in knots as her mind raced, desperately trying to process what was happening. This couldn't be real. How could he be her new boss? For a moment, neither of them spoke. The tension in the room was unbearable. Mrs. Davis's hands trembled as she stood frozen in place, the weight of her actions from the previous day crashing down on her. The memory of her hateful words echoed in her mind, making her feel small and ashamed. Mr. Johnson remained silent, watching her closely. His calmness only made her more nervous. Was he going to fire her on the spot? Was he going to call her out for the awful things she had said? She swallowed hard, her mouth dry as she tried to find something to say, anything that could salvage this moment. I didn't realize. Mrs. Davis stammered, her voice shaky. I had no idea. Mr. Johnson raised an eyebrow, but still said nothing. He simply leaned back in his chair, waiting. The silence stretched on, making Mrs. Davis feel more and more uncomfortable. I'm so sorry, she finally blurted out, her words coming out in a rush. I didn't know who you were, I swear. I didn't mean any of it. I was just having a bad day, that's all. Mr. Johnson's expression remained calm, but his eyes held a depth of emotion that made Mrs. Davis feel even more uneasy. He could see right through her excuses. She could tell that he wasn't buying her apology, but he still didn't interrupt her. I know what I said was wrong, she continued, her voice faltering. Please, I didn't mean it. The weight of the silence was suffocating. Mrs. Davis felt her heart pounding in her chest, fear rising as she realized there was no undoing what she had said. This man, the one she had treated so cruelly, now held her future in his hands. Mrs. Davis stood there, her heart racing so fast she could feel it in her throat. Her palms were sweaty, and her mind was spinning, desperate to figure out what to say next. She had just apologized, but the words felt hollow. She knew they couldn't undo the damage she had caused at the park. And now, standing in front of Mr. Johnson, Asterisk, her new boss Asterisk, the very man she had insulted in the cruelest way, she was terrified. Mr. Johnson remained seated, calm and composed, his hands folded neatly on the table in front of him. He hadn't raised his voice or shown any anger. He was simply waiting, watching. The silence stretched on, and it felt unbearable. Mrs. Davis swallowed hard. Why wasn't he saying anything? Why wasn't he shouting at her or telling her to pack up and leave? She had expected him to be furious, to fire her on the spot, but instead he was just sitting there, like he was waiting for her to say something else. Her words sounded weak even to her own ears, but she didn't know what else to do. She couldn't bear the thought of losing her job. She needed this. But more than that, she felt a strange sense of shame she wasn't used to feeling. It wasn't just about the job anymore. She realized how cruel she had been, how small-minded and hateful. Mr. Johnson leaned forward slightly, his eyes still fixed on her. He was quiet, but there was something in his gaze that made Mrs. Davis feel exposed, like he could see right through all her excuses. You're not like that. Mr. Johnson repeated softly, his voice steady and calm. Then who are you, Mrs. Davis? Do you know what hurt the most about what happened at the park? He asked, his voice still calm, but tinged with a sadness that made her chest tighten. It wasn't just the words. It was the fact that you didn't even see us. 
You didn't see me as a father enjoying time with my daughter. You didn't see my little girl's joy. All you saw was the color of our skin, and that's all that mattered to you. Mrs. Davis felt her face flush with shame. She looked down at the floor, unable to meet his eyes. Every word he said was true, and she knew it. She had let her prejudices cloud her judgment. She had reduced him and his daughter to nothing more than stereotypes in her mind. I'm sorry, she whispered, tears stinging her eyes. I don't know why I did it. I just don't know. I could fire you, he said quietly. I could report you, and no one would blame me for it. Mrs. Davis's heart sank. This was it. She was going to lose her job, and she knew she deserved it. She braced herself for the inevitable. But, Mr. Johnson continued, his eyes softening slightly. I don't believe in using hate to fight hate. What would that teach you? What would that teach me? If I respond with the same anger and bitterness you showed me, then I'm no better. Mrs. Davis blinked, confused. She hadn't expected this. Why wasn't he firing her? Why wasn't he punishing her? I believe in kindness, Mr. Johnson said, his voice growing gentler. I believe in second chances, and I believe people can change if they're willing to learn. Mrs. Davis stared at him, her mind racing. She had expected anger, but instead she was being offered something she didn't think she deserved. Mercy. For the first time in a long time, she felt a flicker of something inside her that she hadn't felt in years, the possibility of change. But, Mr. Johnson added, his gaze sharp now, that doesn't mean you're off the hook. I'm giving you a choice, Mrs. Davis. You can walk out of this office right now, and we'll pretend none of this happened. Or you can stay, and you can learn from this. You can be better. But it's going to take work. Mrs. Davis felt a lump in her throat. The offer was clear, but the decision was far more difficult than she expected. She could walk away and never look back, or she could face her own ugliness and try to be better. I don't want to walk away, she whispered, her voice shaking. I want to learn. I want to be better. Mr. Johnson nodded slowly. Then stay, he said, and let's make sure that what happened at the park never happens again. Tears welled up in Mrs. Davis's eyes as she nodded. She had been given a chance she didn't deserve, but she wasn't going to waste it. Mrs. Davis walked out of the office, her mind still swirling with everything that had just happened. She had been so close to losing her job. But more than that, she had been close to losing a part of herself, her humanity. Now, for the first time in a long time, she felt a sense of hope, a belief that she could be someone different, someone better. The next weekend, Mrs. Davis found herself back at the park. This time, as she walked through the gate, she wasn't filled with anger or resentment. Instead, she felt a sense of calm. The sun was shining again, and the sounds of children laughing filled the air, just like before. She spotted Mr. Johnson and his daughter Emma at the playground, just like that day when everything had gone wrong. They were playing together, Emma's laughter echoing across the park as her father pushed her gently on the swing. Mrs. Davis paused for a moment, watching them from a distance. She felt a pang of guilt for what she had done, but it was quickly replaced by something else, relief. Relief that she had been given the chance to change, to learn, and to move forward. Taking a deep breath, she walked closer, feeling her heart race lightly with nerves. Would they remember her? Would they want to see her again, after everything that had happened? As she approached, Emma spotted her first. The little girl's face lit up with a smile, and she waved enthusiastically. Hi, lady, she called out, her voice bright and cheerful. Mr. Johnson turned to see what had caught his daughter's attention. When his eyes met Mrs. Davis, there was a moment of silence. But then slowly he smiled. Mrs. Davis smiled back, her heart swelling with a mixture of emotions, regret, gratitude, and something new. It was a feeling of redemption, of starting over.
She waved to them both, her hand shaking slightly, but this time it wasn't from fear. It was from hope, and as she turned to walk away, she knew this was the beginning of something new, something better. Mrs. Davis couldn't change the past, but from that moment on, she knew she had the power to change the future, and that, more than anything, was a gift she would never take for granted. As she left the park, she glanced back one last time. Mr. Johnson and Emma were still playing, their laughter filling the air, and for the first time, Mrs. Davis felt at peace.